Welcome back to Home Sweet Home Cooking. I am your host, Rocky, in my mother's kitchen as usual. My mother's gonna sit this one out so she can relax and she'll be back for the taste test. This is a no-bake treat, one of my favorites, is a banana split cake. Uh, I've had this one, I have not made this one, so this will be a first for me to make. I've helped her make it before, but I've never made it from start to finish by myself, I don't recall. Uh, it is some simple ingredients. What we have here, there's gonna be a total of three sticks of butter. I've got one stick of uh, margarine, sorry. One stick of margarine is melted, and these two sticks are at room temperature. I've got two cups of graham crackers. I've got, there's gonna be two cups of brown sugar, or powdered sugar, and two eggs, and that's gonna go, these three ingredients are gonna be the base of the, the ice cream layer of the banana split. I've got bananas, I've got a can of drained crushed pineapple, I've got some whipped topping, and I've got some maraschino cherries that I'm gonna cut in half, and I've got some nuts that are gonna go on top. So to start this, gonna need the melted butter, or the melted margarine, and the two cups of graham crackers. I'm gonna stir those together, and this is gonna form the crust of the cake. Now I've just roughly crushed mine by hand, so there's some bigger chunks in there, that's gonna be fine. Um, we used to be able to buy graham crackers in the store pre-crushed, but we haven't been able to find them lately. I think they still do, we just didn't have them at yeah. Walmart. Yeah, our Walmart doesn't have them. I'm not saying Publix or Piggly Wiggly or Kroger or Food Giant or anybody else doesn't have them, but our Walmart didn't have them. I um, tried once before to get them there too, yeah. I forgot that they didn't have them. All right, so this is just gonna go in a nine by 13 and just get spread out into the base. You can press it down just a little bit to make sure it's got good coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and finish spreading this out. I'm gonna bring the mixer over, get that set up, and we'll mix up the rest of the uh, cake and get it layered and get it in the fridge so it can solidify a little bit and get a taste test with it in a couple hours. So I'll be back when I get the uh, stand mixer set up. Okay, the graham crackers are spread out. The next step is going to be the filling portion of it, which is just powdered sugar, egg, and uh, margarine. So I'm gonna take the eggs first. I'm gonna crack them into the stand mixer. I don't think I got a yolk in there, or a shell in there, but I'm gonna have to double check. Be right back. All right, that egg cracked a little bit funny, and there is no shell in there. I'm uh, just going to give it a quick little mix. And then I'm going to add in the butter, the margarine. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the powdered sugar. And while this is mixing, it's supposed to mix for 10 minutes. You can do this with a hand mixer in a bowl. I'm doing it this way because while this is mixing over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up, slice up my bananas, and I'm gonna cut my maraschino cherries in half. So while this is mixing, I'll be doing that. I'll be back when it's mixed, 10 minutes. 10 minutes have gone by, it is mixed. That is creamy. Uh, yes, these are uncooked eggs. If you are scared of, afraid of, Uncooked eggs, just make sure you buy pasteurized eggs. You'll be fine. Um, eggnog, if you're an eggnog drinker, most of that stuff, if you make it at home, especially you're starting with raw eggs, you're not using pasteurized eggs. Of course, the store-bought eggnog is different. That's all pasteurized, that's why I don't like store-bought eggnog. Um, I do plan on making an eggnog on the channel a little bit closer to Christmas time. I made some, was it last year I made it? And I really liked it. Nobody else in my family liked it, but I liked it. I thought, yeah, your dad didn't even like it. Yeah, well, and he drinks eggnog, but he likes that store-bought stuff. Um, I just like the stuff that I made because it was, I don't know, it was creamier, fresher. All right, so I'm gonna give this a spread. It's gonna be a little bit thin and runny. It'll firm up in the fridge. Next layer is going to be the bananas, the platanos. Los platanos. Can you leave one end without bananas on it? Please? Why, Mom? Because I hate bananas. I don't like touching them, I don't like smelling them, and I sure don't like eating them. All right, just have to remember which end has no bananas on it. Uh, you can, let's say this is a 
banana split cake, but you can put wherever you want for fruit in here. It's got bananas and pineapple and cherries on it. Um, cherries. I, I love cherries. Mom, tell them what I used to get in my Christmas stocking every year. <laughs> Chocolate covered cherries. And a jar. A oh, jar yeah, and just, a jar. A, a straight up jar of maraschino cherries. And I would sit there and eat that whole jar with a spoon or fork or whatever. Um, I, I love the maraschino cherries. And I love, you know, fresh Bing cherries on the, the stem. Um, I don't like cherry pie. I wonder why. Would you like to tell them? I know no. we've told them once before, but if you haven't heard, my mom made a pie for Easter, a cherry pie with fresh cherries. Mind you, they were, well, they were frozen, I believe. Well, I froze them, but they were fresh picked. Pick, fresh picked, not canned, so we can't blame it on the canning factory. Uh, she gave, uh, she had some pie, then she went to work at the supper club. She wasn't feeling well. She worked through her shift, though. No, uh, I didn't. You didn't? You came home early? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, a little while later, um, so she ate the pie right after dinner. She was the first person to get sick. We didn't know anything at this point. Later on, my sister-in-law and I had a piece. And then I wasn't feeling well, but I laid down on the couch to take a little nap. My dad, and I think you came home at that point, and um, they woke me up and asked me if I could drive my sister-in-law to the doctor because she was a diabetic. And... Uh, uh, they, you know, she didn't want her to die because of uh, what's going on. So they, th at that point, they still didn't know what was going on. Maybe I wanted her so, to die. So uh, I took her to the hospital. On the way, I, I, mean, I didn't even make it out of the house, and I got sick. Picked her up, and I got sick a couple times on the way to the ER. She got sick a couple times on the way to the ER. She's in the hospital. Um, I pass out in the waiting room of the hospital. They picked me back up and just put me in a chair. And I finally said, "Look, you need to." treat me and then I passed out again they took me back and found out that she had food poisoning I had food poisoning we came home and my dad had eaten a pie before we could tell him what was going on and he ended up getting sick later that night so she tried to kill the entire family off and that's how we knew it was that because that's the only thing we ate in stages and that's how right. we got sick so I don't trust her cherry pies anymore all and right. that's all that's the only thing that we all had yep and especially the way that it was staged out, it had to be that. All right, next step is, once you get the banana spread out, uh, some crushed pineapple. I still say that's the best tasting pie I ever ate. It tasted fantastic. And then in the morning it was bubbling yeah. in the pan. Yeah, it was it, it was fermenting in the pan on the, the countertop, the bacteria that was in it. Um, so that's how we also knew that it was the, had to be in the pie. But it was, uh, yeah, that's why I don't like her fresh cherry, pie, uh, cherry pies anymore. I don't even like the little Debbie Hostess pies. Um, I'll eat them, but it reminds me of that. Um, I don't like canned cherries for cheesecakes anymore. She ruined me. She absolutely ruined me. All right. I didn't quite use the whole pan. Can. Uh, next layer is going to be some whipped cream. And I'm going to have to cut this up a little because it's still a little bit frozen. And after that, uh, I'll be right back when I get this thawed out a little bit and get it spread on there. Got it stirred in, got all the ice crystals broke up, so I should be able to spread this and drop it in dollops around the pan so it's easier to spread. And then. Give that its own layer. Everything's a little bit loose, so you gotta be careful you're not mixing it all together. Kinda wanna leave it layered out a little bit. And then I'm gonna spread the cherries on top, because a banana split's not a banana split unless you have that cherry on top, right, Ma? Right. You know, you could probably, when you put it on your serving plate, you could even squirt a little chocolate syrup on it. Mm -hmm. A little fudge or hot chocolate or chocolate syrup, yep. So I'm just gonna give these a little dash. I cut mine in half, hopefully to get a little more coverage out of them. I don't know if that's really working. It could cut them into quarters, you could grind them up. It's just the flavor and a little bit of color on there. Apparently I didn't cut them all the way through because they're sticking together. 
In other words, you're not a cut up. Well, in other words, I'm half assing it today. And last but not least, you're going to cover that with some chopped nuts. The hardest part of the whole thing is beating that for 10 minutes. Yeah, especially if you're doing the hand mixer, that would take a while. All right, so that's what it looks like. Now, it's, you know, like I said, it's not set up, so I can't hold it up on edge. I'm going to go ahead and get some in the fridge. And it'll be in there for at least an hour to two hours while I'm going to get my dad from dialysis. But we will give it a taste test tonight. And I'll hopefully be a happy boy. So we'll be back after this is cooled and set up. Due to a battery issue with the camera, I did not get the taste test on the same day, which is fine. It was still a little bit soft, uh, but it is two days later and it's halfway gone. <laughs> it didn't stay around long. My mom made her entire strip that we made without bananas, so she won't be having a taste test in this oh, portion. I'll taste it. I just won't smile. Well, you don't have to. You can tell them what yours tasted like. Well, mine was good because it didn't have bananas, but... Yeah, because she doesn't like the bananas. I don't like the smell. I don't like the feel. I don't like the consistency. I don't like bananas. But as I said, I, I ate a piece this two days ago, so I already know it's good, but... Now that it's sat in the fridge for a couple days, and it's actually set up, it's even better. Um, I didn't drain the pineapple well enough. I just cracked the can open, tipped it upside down. You really need to put it in a strainer and drain off as much liquid off that pineapple as you can. It ended up a little bit soupy in the bottom and the graham crackers are rather soggy. Despite that, all the flavors of the banana split are there. The pineapple, the banana, the cherries, the nuts, uh, the whipped cream on top, it's all there. Um, the thing that we beat for 10 minutes acts like the ice cream layer. I like it, I like it a lot. This has been one of my favorites as a no-bake treat for the summertime, for any time really. Um, nice and cool, it's refreshing. So in the summertime, great dessert. If you just wanna throw something together quick in the fall or the winter, again, it's simple to do. You could drizzle some chocolate sauce on top too. Yeah, a little chocolate sauce, a little bit of caramel if you wanna do that uh, chocolate or hot fudge on top of your sundae, just like a, a banana split sundae would be, that's fine. There's another recipe that my mom found before she found this one. This is the one that I remember growing up, but she couldn't find it. It was in, hidden away in one of her cookbooks because she couldn't find her recipe anymore. So she looked online. There is also a southern version of this, which says it's made with cream cheese. And I do want to give that a shot because I do like cream cheese based, based desserts. So expect another one, a part two to this to come up sometime in the future. And I don't want it on there. I'm just saying it would be good on there. It would be. I like mine without. Um, so stay tuned. We'll do a, a cream cheese based version of this here upcoming in maybe a month or so. Um, I have no problem doing it right now, but we'll hold off on that and get that out at some point. But give this one a try, folks. It is really good. It's like I say, it's everything is there. I don't. I'm not a big banana pudding fan, so I would rather have this than banana pudding. Sorry, I know I'm in yourself, but I'm not. I just don't like banana pudding. I, I don't like the pudding texture, the pudding flavor. I like uh, fresh homemade puddings. But I don't like the stuff that's made with the instant. If, it, if it's made with instant, it has a processed taste I don't like. So that's why I don't like a lot of the banana puddings. But I like the bananas in this. You won't be sorry if you make it, mm -hmm. and it won't last long. I mean, we're not kidding. This is two days, and it's <laughs> more than half gone. My dad eats this, and my dad's picky, so. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, so that's a good thing. And he likes it. And he likes it. So folks, again, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Do everything to help the channel grow so we can add some more viewers and add some, maybe get some uh, giveaways going and get some promotions going on. But I need more viewers in order to do that so I can uh, try to get YouTube to monetize and give me some money back for making the videos and I can turn around and put that back in the channel through giveaways or special events. But uh, again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. And I'm going to have me some more of this.